Okay, so let's look at setting file and folder level permissions. Now, that's done when we do the share using uh, Server Manager. However, it only does it on the share folder. We may want different permissions underneath that folder. And so we need to go into File Manager and change them. If we do the share using File Manager or Computer Management, that doesn't set our NTFS permissions at all. It will let us set share level permissions, but share level permissions are really, really limited. Share level permissions only apply if somebody accesses the data through a share, so coming across the network. And it's it only allows read, read, write, or full control. That's it. And it does it to everything underneath that share. So not really a lot of control. So what we'll normally do is we will set our share level permissions to everyone full control. And then we'll use NTFS permissions to actually restrict access. And we do that in File Manager. So let's open up File Manager. We'll go to this PC, we'll go to the C drive, shares, and I'm going to just pick one here. I'm going to pick simple and we're going to set some permissions on that. So I'm going to right click on simple, go to properties and security, and this is where we set, set permissions. All right, everyone full control. Now that actually did get set when I did... Um, when we did the simple sharing, but it just gives that read writer full control thing. Um, if I were to create a new folder, let me get a new folder here. We'll call it permissions. And I want to look at our permissions here. So I'm going to go to security. Now, this is going to give us the creator owner has down here special permissions. And creator owner is not something you ever want to screw with. System, this is the operating system. Again, you don't want to screw with that. Administrators have permissions, and then users have read and execute, list folder contents, read, and then some special permissions. Now, you'll notice all of those are grayed out. They are grayed out because they are inherited. So when you set permissions on a folder, those permissions inherit down to um, folders and files underneath them. That's permission inheritance. You can sh add permissions to uh, what's inherited, but you can't take permissions away without blocking inheritance. So to edit, and these are simple permissions, to edit, I would click the edit button here, and then I can click on users, and then I can allow additional permissions. Now, you almost never want to deny permissions. Um, deny, if you don't want somebody to have access to it, don't deny them, just don't give them access. If you don't allow, it's the same thing as a deny. A deny only comes into play in very rare situations when you are wanting to trump other permissions. So it's fairly unusual. An explicit deny will block an inherited allow. But that's a weird situation, and most of the time you don't have to use it. Most of the time you just don't allow permissions, and then people don't have access. And if I wanted to add somebody else to the system also, I'd add, and then I could do a search for the username, and then add additional permissions. If I'm happy, apply, okay, and we're good. So, now you see these ones are explicit, the dark ones are explicit, these ones are inherited. All right, if I want to do special permissions advanced settings, then I click the advanced tab. And this right here should be really similar to what we saw. In fact, it's the exact, almost the exact same thing that we saw when we did the, um, when we created the share using server manager. So this shows me my permissions and it shows me where it's inherited from and all of these came from the C drive now let's say I wanted to block some of these permissions so what I want to do is I want to disable inheritance I just want to clear it and start over so I'm going to disable inheritance now when it does it asks this question should we convert inherited permissions to explicit or should just we just remove this is a really dumb question I wish they wouldn't ask this because you never want to remove. If you remove inherited permissions, you take out the system, the administrators, and the creator owner. And trying to get those back in right can be a pain. And you don't want to deny the operating system permission to its own files. So what we'll do is we'll convert to inherited permissions.
Now, I'm going to leave my system, my owners, and my creator owner away. These are all, notice, now they're inherited from none. And typically at this point, most of the time you can just say apply, okay. And now all of these permissions are explicit permissions. So now you can go through and edit to your heart's content. So I'm going to edit and I can choose this particular users group and I can remove them. And now their permissions go away. Or I can add another user and it dawns on me I don't have any other users groups. So I'm just going to do users again. And now I can specify the permissions I want them to have. So, read and execute means, well, they can read and they can execute. List folder contents, they can see the contents of the folder. Read, you can give read without doing read and execute. And the difference is that if you just do read, then what that means is that they can read contents, but if there is a script, they can't execute. Most of the time when people say they want read permissions, what they mean is they want read and execute. You also have permission to write. Now, frequently people will say they want read-write permissions. When they say they want read-write permissions, what they really mean is they want modify permissions. Write gives you the permission to write, not necessarily the permission to change. Modify gives you the permission to change. So anytime somebody says they want read, what they typically mean is they want read and execute. If they say uh, they want read and write, what they typically mean is they want modify. Now, the other thing to realize is that some of these build on top of each other, right? So if I uncheck them all and then I click read and execute, it's automatically going to select list folder contents and read because that's all part of that read and execute permission. If I choose just read, it gives me just read permissions. This would be read and write. But remember, when people say they want read and write, what they really mean is they want modify. So when we select modify, actually let me uncheck all of those again so you can see them all populate. When we select modify, it basically gives them all of these other permissions. Special, by the way, is grayed out. So the ones that we're looking at here, read and execute, list folder contents, read, write, modify, these are standard permissions. We also have um, enhanced permissions. And that's something we'll look at here in a minute. But anything that doesn't fit a, the um, extended permissions, that's what they want. It, a standard permission is a combination of different extended permissions. If you give extended permissions that don't fit into any of these logical categories, then it goes to special permissions. All right, the difference between modify and full control. Modify means you can change a file. You cannot change permissions on the file. Full control means you can change permissions and everything else. Full control is everything. So you can read, execute, list, write, modify, change, delete, everything. Full control, modify permissions, full control gives you all of it. Okay, so these are, let me uh, hit apply and okay again. Now these are all standard permissions. Back to advanced, I can set my extended permissions. So here, if I want to, let me take the users here, and I'm going to edit the users. And you're going to see basic permissions. And then I can show my advanced or my extended permissions. And this gives me a few other options. Now, all of these are kind of grouped together into basic permissions, which is fine. But if I want something really, really weird, so let's say I want you, let me go ahead and uncheck a bunch of these. I want you to be cr to create files and write data. I want you to be able to create folders. I want you to read attributes, read extended attributes. Uh, but I don't want you to be able to delete. So I'll just leave those unchecked. And then read permissions because that's always useful. All right, this will be a weird set of permissions. Traverse folder, by the way, means you can go through the folder, execute the file. All right, so this applies to file, subfolder, this folder, subfolders, and files. This lets you 
define that's default. This lets you define who all do these changes apply to, or how far do these changes apply. That's the word that I want. How far do these changes apply? So this is this folder, this subfolders and files related to it. I can also choose this folder only, this folder and subfolders, this folder and files, but not subfolders, files only, subfolders only. You get the idea. So this is the one that we use most of the time. It's going to be inherited everywhere from here on down. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, those permissions that I set don't fit any of the predefined basic categories, so we have special permissions, and that's when special shows up. Okay, if I want to re-enable inheritance, I can do that here. I don't. I just could do it from there. Um, if I want to change the owner, I can do that from here. The owner always has permissions to change permissions on their files. It also comes into play for quotas um, and tracking who's using how much data. So, couple of or one other thing I want you to see, and that is effective access. So, effective access. I have to apply permissions before that'll work. Effective access lets me view permissions for a specific folder based on a specific user or group. So I can select a specific user or group and let me search for, I'm going to do administrator because I don't have a lot of other users in the system. I'm going to do an administrator, okay. And I've already set my folder, C shares permissions. So for an administrator, view effective access, this will show me what this person can do. And these are the permissions, and yes, I have all of those permissions because I am an administrator. If I had another user, um, in fact, I should have one more user here, but I can't remember who. So I'm going to open up Active Directory Users and Computers real quick so I can remember what user I had. Server Manager is already open. Tools, and I don't. I'm on a different system than I thought I was. So right click and computer management because I should have a local user here. Wrong one. There we go. I don't. Let's make one. We're going to create a new user. We're going to call him Sam and password. Now Sam is not going to be a member of the administrators group. So, when I come back to my permissions, oops, that's what I wanted, permissions. Let me go back to my advanced, and I want to use Sam's effective access. So, Sam, check name, OK, view access, and this will show me what Sam is allowed to do and what he's not. So, anything with a red X, he's not allowed to do, and it tells me its access is limited by file permissions. And then, what he can do. Now this is great because it will take every group that that user is part of, look at their permissions, and put them all together with all the inherited permissions and show you exactly what this user can do. And this is a great tool for troubleshooting permissions. Okay, so um, hopefully that gives you the beginnings, at least, of an idea of how we manage file and folder permissions in Windows Server.